Hi guys, today's video is about Philodendron Golden Dragon that I repotted this weekend. I'm not an expert in the care, as you can tell. Well, no I'm not. This is a very leggy one. It was bought like this, like I'm not the kind of person that could ever justify spending much on a plant. It's just I like cheap plants so much, I'm just not that bothered about spending like anything over. Right, so he was 25, he was either 24.99 or 29.99. I think he might have been 29.99. Um, Philodendron Golden Dragon aren't rare. They're just not, they're kind of, they're common but not particularly in demand. I mean, they are in demand in like plant circles, but they're not a particular, they're like one of the, <laughs> like starter rarer plants if you get what I mean uh so a, a normal <laughs> what am I saying so like your average person that just wants a plant isn't gonna seek out a philodendron golden dragon but I find it really hard to say philodendron golden dragon so yeah they're not rare but they are they don't crop up that often in you can easily get one online but you can't that easily see them in stores so when I saw this one like my local ish about 40 minutes away garden center have a really good selection and this one came in and the reason it was reduced was it had decided that it wanted to vine and i can't stop it doing that i've actually just recently moved it so it used to be in a spot about five feet away from the living room window then i moved it into the back corner where it was a lot darker and it really started shooting out new growth which was confusing uh, but it does this thing where so if you look at the old leaves at this one they're big they're like you know they're big and you can see why they're called dragon looks like a dragon's head oh this one this particular specimen is called smaug and i so i do i have propagated him uh, as you like a couple of vlogs ago i showed you and he um he was growing a new leaf and then it just went all brown and crispy but it's it's growing again it's fine but they don't propagate for me that easily like it takes ages they don't die and i've not had a failure but i've just had a lot of not really a lot's happened so i might take a few cuttings and we'll see if it takes the aquarium will probably be good for him but i think one of the main problems i had with him was that he was in a terracotta pot because i needed to repot him when i first got him and i didn't have anything else now he's in a Lashusa pot, the self-watering, uh, which I will show you, but it's really grubby. It was outside. I'm not a massive fan of self-watering pots. I get why they're good for like Lekka, but this is this one isn't in Lekka. Um, he's back in soil, then it's got a pond at the bottom. But whatever, he's going to be happier than he was in the terracotta pot because he, so Philodendron, especially, I think especially Golden Dragon, can go like bone dry. So I was kind of, leaving him too much because I do I'm an over un, I'm an underwaterer but also the terracotta really wasn't helping and whilst he's alive like he's fine and he's growing it's not been great for like optimal growth which is why so all these vines his proper he's got a, a lot of new growth this one isn't particularly healthy it looks like so this looks like physical damage yeah so it's been it's got caught on something just show you see there's like a line here that's not a pest hasn't done that that's just it's been folded over at some point but all this this is all like so he's got loads of new where's the thing there so he has got a load of new growth coming out but it's very small we've got a new leaf here and they do grow oh god as an aside I, my Anthurium chlorinervium has been shooting out new growth like nobody's business and at first I was really not annoyed but I was like oh interesting the new leaves were teeny and I was like oh okay fine because it's in good light and um there's a gnat hello but they like I know when a plant puts out a new leaf it's not at its adult size as it was and they do grow once they're unfurled but it's grown massive. I've never known something go from that small to like, like a full size clarinarium leaf. I didn't know they did that. And it was, it's just, 
it's interesting and it's really because I was like oh maybe I've got a dud one but no it's just that's how they grow or that's how man grows anyway what was I on about oh yeah this thing viney so I I knew the light the light probably is an issue that's one of the reasons the light the leaves are so small but he seemed happier where he in his new spot than he was in his old spot I don't know why it might have been some, I don't know why he just prefers where he is now so I thought I'll repot him get him out of the terracotta and into self-watering and that way we might encourage some more leaves so that is what we're going that's what I did so I was gonna film it well I did film it I'll put clips up, up of me redoing it but I didn't have to do it outside because not only is he really big, he's really, really, like, he's not a good shape. He's just really, like, hello. He's sort of, he's got, they've got really long petioles. I don't know if that's just Golden Dragon or if it's because of the way he was grown. But I'm I'm guessing, like, that was why he was so cheap. I know that's why he's so cheap, because he's really healthy. I like the leaf shape on Philodendron Golden Dragon, and I like the size of the leaves. The growth pattern is mad. I don't know, again, I don't know if it's just mine, but it just vines like nothing. I, I don't want to undo it because it took me ages to, uh, I knew. So as I said, I don't want to propagate it because it takes too long and I don't, it's my boy, this is my boyfriend's pride and joy. And I don't want to take so many cuttings that I kill the mother plant. So I'm going to wait until he's a little bit bigger. The petioles are so long, he's got probably about four different vines. It's impossible to make him look good. He's one of those plants I think that would look incredible growing up a wall or something. Uh, he's attached to this moss pole. Now moss poles, there's a little bit of a... It's not that you can't grow plants up moss poles, it's just they're not the best thing because the aerial roots will attach to the moss but that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for something solid that they can climb up that will support the plant. So a moss pole isn't really gonna cut it. Unless you keep it constantly moist and try and trick the plant into thinking that it's alive and will support the plant. But nine times out of ten it doesn't work. And that one time out of ten, if you accidentally let it dry out too much, the aerial roots will just let go. Whereas if you grow them up something solid, they'll cling on much better. So I'm just waiting until, probably until we move house, to do something significant with the shape of him i'm just gonna let him grow however he likes he lives in the living room by himself he he came into contact with a lot of plants um and he even though he's by himself he used to get the odd thrip that is one thing about philodendron golden dragon they seem pretty pest resistant or mine does anyway he's had thrips and i literally just wiped them down once and they've gone so he's one of, he's they seem to be one of those non-tasty plants which is great if you're looking for like a more statement plant if you buy one that's a good shape and pretty big, they are really easy to look after. He requires nothing from me. The only thing is he gets really dusty. That could just be where he is in my house, probably is, but he does get dusty. So yeah, you'll need to dust him. Another thing I would say about Philodendron Golden Dragon is the repot was easy. The, I mean, repotting in itself isn't hard, but sometimes you'll find with certain plants they'll really take offence to you repotting them and they will look like crap. Any new growth will just stop and crisp. He does not care. He doesn't care about anything. He's just really, really, I don't want to say indestructible because I'll tip him off the chair or something, but he just does really, really well. The only issue I have with him is his weird growth pattern and I think that is just mine. Or it's something that they can get and my reticence to propagate because of how slow it is, is an issue. That it, I did find it interesting that he stopped growing where he was and then when I put him somewhere with less light he started growing but so he's in the back corner and it's in like a recessed wall so he gets not a lot of light most of the day but the light he does get is early morning light and it's quite it's not bright because morning light isn't bright but it's quite um concentrated where he is so I don't know if he prefers a couple of hours of more bright light and then not a lot of light as opposed to where he was before he was he got bright and direct to medium most of the day um so yeah the only th thing i can think to test this is shove him outside for a couple of hours and see what he does but i don't want to do that just after a repot because that just seems like it's asking for trouble 
So maybe in a couple of weeks, I'll experiment with putting him outside. Also interestingly, he grew when he was vining where he used to be. He would vine towards my grow lights, but my grow lights were maybe six feet away from him. The window was like five feet away. So I don't know why he preferred grow lights to natural light, but he seemed to. <laughs> and the grow lights were only on for a few hours a day, so he sh like he should have gone. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what his deal with light is. He won't say. So yeah. And now I'm just gonna do a little update on. So I've never mentioned this on my on YouTube before. I don't think. But I had a nightmare last year with. Spider mites and Calathea, and I there was one culprit. And if you've seen one of these and been in this business for a while, you'll probably be like, "Yeah, these things love spider mites, or spider mites love them." There's just something about them; they just get them all the time. This one actually has decided to move on from spider mites, and I've got thrips. Um, so he's also one of these plants. He lives on the kitchen table. He has to live by himself because he will pass all his bugs on to everybody else. And it's such a shame because they are such gorgeous plants. But you really need to be on it with your pest care because it's specifically any of these ones with white stripes on them. And I love them so much because if you look at this leaf, They've got like this blush pink and they are gorgeous. In fact, this one is growing so, oh no, there's a thrip. I was gonna say I might separate it off because it hasn't got them yet, but no. Nah. You can see like, so the back of this one is purple and beautiful. And then if you find one that's had thrips, it's the purple starts to like wear off. If you brush up against them, you get purple on you because like the purple comes off. Oh, this one has a stripe, look at that. No idea what caused that. So anyway, the thing that really bothered me with this was it gave my Velvet Touch spider mites and my Velvet Touch dealt with them a lot better than this did because it didn't, the leaves just looked crap. But the problem with Velvet Touch is washing them is such a nightmare because whatever you use to wipe them off with, you always get fibers on the leaves and you can't get it off. I once, oh, don't do this, accidentally. Well, I didn't accidentally do it. I was just wiping the leaves off and I, I was upstairs and I thought I'll just use some tissue because I didn't have a cloth with me. Never do that. Bits of tissue stuck to the, I think there's probably still white bits on there now from the tissue. So yeah, but I was annoyed. So the, the Velvet Touch kept, I managed to get rid of the spider mites on it and I obviously had to keep them separate. But this, I just couldn't get them. I just, and it's such a nice plant, but if you look at the backs of the leaves, you can see how damaged they are. I hate it so, I mean, I love you, but I hate it so much. So what I did, I mean, I treated it for months, months and months and months, spraying it, I got some live ladybirds. I kept it in the shower and washed it off, but it they wouldn't go. I mean, I was really on it with this plant. I was spraying it off every couple of days, wiping down the leaves every day for weeks and weeks and weeks. And it became, I didn't want to do it anymore. And I was so sad because it's such a pretty plant. I'm going to show you the pink again because it's just so pretty. I mean, look at that little blush colour. And yeah, I couldn't do it. So I chopped all the leaves off as a last ditch attempt and it grew back amazingly. This is a bit of like a repeat of last week's with the bloody Calathea Zabrina. It's Calathea. The annoying thing about Calathea and spider mites is spider mites shouldn't live where Calathea live because spider mites like dry, arid environments and Calathea like moist, dark environments. So yes. I keep it by the, in the kitchen table and the issue I've got that is the kitchen table has a radiator next to it. So I do get crispy tips. I don't care that much because as long as it's growing well, I know that I can always once I've decided that it's pest free, I can see bloody baby thrips on there. I'll be able to move it, but I'm just so annoyed. And I know it's not just me, like Calathea or Nata just seem to, pests just seem to love them so, so much. It's, mm, it's not great. There do just seem to be some plants that pests love. Not philodendron, not philodendron saloon. Is it philodendron saloon? It's also called thornatophyllum. The split leaf philodendron, <laughs> those things. I'm gonna call it a philodendron saloon. I think that's what it is. That's what it's commonly known as, but I don't think it is a philodendron, so. Mm. 
botanical names aside, that one, the one with the wavy leaves, that is a pain for thrips. You can't get rid of them. And it doesn't seem, it's one of those, it doesn't seem to impact the plant that much, but it really impacts everything else. So you have to keep them isolated. And it's all very well saying, well, just keep it isolated then. Well, I've already got a Monstera in isolation. I've got Macroton in isolation. I've got this Calathea White Star in isolation. There's only so many places I've got that are isolated. I'm going to have to have my own like prison system for my plants where they're all separate in little p plastic boxes. Right, so this is it. This is what the leaves look like. The leaves are normally massive, but this is just a tiny one because it's actually cut back. You can see it's got like the wavy edges. And it's got a trunk too. Can you see this trunk? It's really cool. But, and it's got a new, you know, something's going on here. I think I might go outside. It went outside last year because I was just got sick of it with the thrips. That's what I'm gonna do this afternoon, actually, just pop it outside with the others. That is dry as hell. But yeah, I can't keep it inside. Every winter when I bring it in, because it can't survive in the summer with, like, our winter it would die outside. It's a tropical plant. So I just cut all the leaves off and bring it in, and I'm hoping that if it doesn't have any leaves, it won't get any pests, because why would they live on it? So that is my plan of action with this. And the thing about cutting plants right back, some plants, not all of them, is that quite often, they'll grow much quicker. So you might think, oh, it's a massive plant, cut it back and then next year it'll grow smaller. No, they grow back really big. So that made no sense, especially my evidence is this plant and it's got one tiny leaf. But um, in general, I've found they've got that much of a root system that they just shoot up new growth and it's fine. I've got another one like that as well, actually. This is a Philodendron Burley Marks and I knew there was issues with this when I bought it. Um, it looked really unhealthy. And it was it was thirty nine ninety nine reduced to fourteen ninety nine, which is why I brought it home. It just had a load of yellow leaves, so um, I knew that there was an issue. But if you look, so I saw I can't remember what I saw. There's definitely pests on it, but I can't remember what they were. Probably thrips. I just chopped all the new growth the the growth off, and it looked like it was dying. But now it looks we've got loads of new shoots growing. In fact, this one, which one is one? Here. Hey, it's hiding new growth. There's also something weird happening here. It seems like we've got two leaves coming out of the same. It's not gonna focus. There's like a new leaf growing here and then one here. And then there's new growth off to the side. So I'm confident that it will grow well that's very close, isn't it? I'm sorry. I'd, I'd, on my website, I recommend people don't buy plants from the reduced section just because they tend to have pests. That tends to be why. They're either overwatered and have root rot, in which case, wait until no one's looking and then just gently pull the stem. If it feels really wobbly and like it's gonna like snap, put it back. But if it just looks really sad, and it's cheap enough that it's worth that you know you don't mind if it because it might die. If you take it home, rinse the roots off, chop off all the grim bits, give it a soak in hydrogen peroxide, you'll probably be okay. But it's pests that are a pain because they'll travel to other plants. The worst ones, I think, I know thrips and spider bites suck. They're the most damaging, but. I don't, it's probably just because I'm used to them, so I don't think they're that bad. I hate mealybugs because mealybugs live in crevices in plants and you can't see them. And you think you've got rid of them all and you haven't. And I hate that about them. Ten, it tends to be succulents that they live in, so always check succulents. But also always check orchids, especially white ones, because the mealybugs can hide on them. If you look behind the flower, like at the back of the flower head, you might see mealybugs on there. I'm not saying they all have it, it's just things that I've seen a lot in reduced plants. So um, just be aware that it happens. But sometimes, especially in like more specialist garden centers, you might get plants. Has that got aphids on it? Oh my God, it's got aphids. Some plants, I I'm not gonna be able to see. Right, so this leaf here has two aphids on it. You can't see at all. You just have to, you might just get a plant that they can't sell because it looks weird as hell and that's how we got Smaug because he was so leggy and like he instead of growing up he was like I'll just grow everywhere and people don't want that in their house I, I was after a philodendron golden dragon I just got into plants and I've been watching 
I think like a Kaylee Ellen haul or something and I was like I need one and I saw it and I was buzzing not as buzzing as when, as when I found my Florida Green mislabeled that was really exciting but yeah I was so excited about that so I didn't really care what it looked like plus I knew that I could reshape it I've just not done it yet you can always tie up like so I could tie this up like there's a big but this has got variegation on it but like yeah so you, I could tie this leaf to the moss pole but it wouldn't encourage it to grow in a different way because this leaf that this isn't a stem it's a petiole all I would gain by tying it to the leaf is it might look a bit better but I'd probably risk snapping it so my current plan is to wait until it gets a little bit bigger basically I'm gonna grow vines take a load of long cuttings and make a new plant to be my like a nice looking plant and then I'll, <laughs> then I'll keep the mother plant somewhere else that sounds horrible but you know what I mean like I'd rather put up with it looking a bit wild now um and kind of figure out the care and stuff and then once we've got new good healthy growth on there and I've figured out the propagation what you know and I've figured out how to make it propagate a little bit quicker then we can sorry work on making it look nicer but I suppose it depends on like how important it is that you have aesthetically pleasing plants I'm not that bothered to be honest hence I've got a lot of plants that look like this but I think like when we have our own house because we rent this one we would look into having the living wall above where our fish tank is ideally that would be in like an office space <laughs> um, because my boyfriend is into aquariums I'm into plants and it would be really useful if we could have everything together because god if I could just get water directly from the fish tank, that'd be so much easier. So that is the plan, but mm, I think I'm just ranting. I think I'm just rambling now. I've got 30 minutes of like rubbish footage. So I'm gonna leave it there for today. If you have any tips for propagating golden dragon like slightly quicker, please let me know. Like I'd be really um interested to know if anybody's had success with different methods. I might try air layering just because I've never tried it before, so he's got aerial roots, so why not? Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.